So number six, do you want to talk about the asbestos and and others, other roof thingies? Yeah. So if you want me to start, and then we'll uh, get into it. So we t spent a lot of our discussion at the department head meeting today, talking about continuity of operations and the implementation of the four projects that were approved by the voters yesterday. Those uh, roofs on three buildings and the asbestos uh, abatement on the floors at Town Hall. And we all agreed that for the Town Hall project, the, the roofs can go without dis disturbing operations for DPW police and for Town Hall, but the asbestos floor requires a complete cleaning out of everyone and everything from this building and relocating and setting up elsewhere for probably a three-week period. So we, we talked about timing and we talked about logistics. Uh, we have identified the best time for this relocation for the project to begin on the 13th of July. That's Monday, July 13th. And that uh, we would expect to be Town Hall would be closed and sealed and being worked upon for the next three weeks to August 1st. Um, we would expect to start cleaning everything out starting July 1st. So all the chairs, all everything off the walls, all the paper, all the desks, all the people. Um, Mike very generously offered to use, uh, to place us in the in the command center over at the public, the community room over at the public safety complex. So we would relocate all the vital functions of town hall over there, all the, the money, all the decision making, the communications, uh, uh, payroll, uh, assessors, building what inspector. In community room. Community, community room, room, kitchen, and our, our uh, officers. What about the IT? Yeah, enough network? Room. We're Everybody? not networked, are we? What's that? The IT, we're not even networked, are we? We have wireless, so, so they doing could. an assessment of everybody's needs. Yeah. Everyone's comfortable as long as they can get online. So this building is all going to fit in three rooms? We're only moving people and what they need for two weeks. So <laughs> everything else is being stored in pods. Yeah. If there's anything that needs to be secured, uh, if it if it needs to be secured more than just in a pod that's sitting out here, it'll be relocated over to the monitored uh, public safety building. So we're, we'll be mapping it out. We have a coup plan in place for continuity of operations, and the first choice was Hopkins if they are out of out of uh, out of school. But there's no, you know, they were going to put them in the gymnasium. That's it's not. There's no air conditioning. There's probably going to be events going on. In the no summer. heat either. <laughs> well, it's in the summer. <laughs> There'll be a lot of people. It'll be, it'll, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be warm in July. It'll be all yeah. Why? Is, that is a good question. Why is there no heat in that gym? There is. Oh, somebody didn't turn a thermostat <laughs> up again. They, they don't know how to control the heating system there. No, the, there's right. heat. I, I'm sorry. I have to. If Jeff Mish is at home watching, he'll probably be down here home. lickety split. Um, there, there is heat in the building. Right. There is heat. It's capped at 65 degrees. The gymnasium, architecturally, it's like trying to heat a barn. So, you know, cranking the heat up to a certain, it just, it's going right out of there. Um, there's another control set so that when the external temperature exceeds 65 degrees, or something, it, you know, there's automatic shutoffs. So the bottom line is it's a lot easier to make sure that the elections are held in the cafeteria and work around that where we can control the heat better than to put, put people put in, in a gymnasium. gymnasium. And no one ever notices because when you're in the gym, you're usually there with a hundred other people watching a basketball game and it's hot. Yeah. Or a concert. Or, or a concert. At least in the cafeteria, there's a fans in there and things yep. too. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Mish came to see me this morning and he did, <laughs> he did uh, say that there would be a lot of concern expressed about the temperature. He said he was trying that he was that, uh, he was trying to do the best he could with what he had. No, they did it. They they did as best they could. It's just the building that space is the wrong space for an election, especially yeah. if you don't have that many people coming through to heat it up. So I mean, no. maybe the thing to do. We're a little off topic here, but maybe the thing to do is to just think about delaying the election for an hour, start at one, so you can go into the cafeteria. 
after the kids are after done. After kids had in the hallway, for Christ's sake. After the hallway. That's what Mr. Mitch says, but there are controls. You can override those controls after 15 years of installing those and wiring those furnaces. I know what you can do. You can't do it. We sat in that room for four hours at 58 degrees until such time as you people told this commission, then they cranked it up, and it went up four degrees by eight o'clock. Right, but we, we at a previous select board meeting, um, no. we have an agreement that, uh, or at least would like to try to adhere to a general rule that when people aren't here in a room to defend themselves, that we don't really have a discussion about what somebody else has been doing. So we were there, we heard what you said, that's why I just said Jeff, Jeff isn't here right now, and there were, was more to the story, so. I don't think we need to. So we don't need yeah. heat for July. Well, that's true. And we're going to go not to the gym. We're going to the fire station, that color safety complex. Well, I, so I mean, was Hopkins an option? It, is it viable to go over there at, at some point? This would be a good. So we identified three buildings. Natu national disaster He's speaking. Uh, practice. Wait, wait, wait. wait a minute. There were three buildings? So we, we identified three buildings where we could uh, set up a uh, shop. The, we've, we had a three-day shutdown of town hall way back when, when we uh, installed the ventilation system and we had to do asbestos abatement. We set up over at the uh, senior center uh, and were able to keep town hall operations going for a three-day period. It was not ideal, but uh, it worked. Um, we did talk about going over to the schools. We haven't had any conversation whatsoever with school personnel. We don't know how that fits into their renovation pro uh, project that they're supposedly going to be doing this summer with the generators. So that's still an option, but we just haven't explored it. Um, Mike offered the community room, and I've, I've, I've seen what it can do. Um, and I think that that's maybe on my first choice. It's a good opportunity for us to test this because there is a chance that we would have to set up an operations center there. Mm -hmm. So for us to be able to establish phone lines mm -hmm. uh, so that calls are getting forwarded from here over there, this this mm -hmm. is, I think it's a good test for us and certainly not putting us up. There's three of us down our end of the hallway. We have space. Uh, we can share for the time frame. So I, I think it's the best fit. It's a secure building. They're going to be in flex with a lot of stuff that might need to be secured. So let's secure it in a 24-hour facility rather than keeping it in a pod uh, that could be broken into. So it just seems to be the best fit at this time. If something comes up, if there's if the question came up, if there is a, an emergency that we need to have the operation center, then we'll have a contingency plan for that. We have North Hadley Hall as a backup if we have to for us to go to. So you know, there's options for us as well for operating. We can even operate out of our bays if we have to. Mm -hmm. There's wireless in the space. We have wireless uh, printers we can set up for them. Mm -hmm. We have Hampshire Regional Emergency Planning Committee equipment there already that's in place. So it's an opportunity to us to see how it works. I think it's the best fit for us. So it's five, it's five weeks. One week of moving. Right. Three so weeks of operations. So one week of moving back in. Yeah, so like two weeks of packing up and three, three weeks of uh, actually doing doing the work in here. Yeah, and then you're going to be looking at a week or two of unpacking. Right, we're, then we're going to have to turf everything back in here. You have a chance to clean that office. Yeah. <laughs> <You're just laughs> that. Wow. wow. Maybe I'll even have yeah, to afford to go. Huh? <laughs> so, so one of the other things that we talked about is the, that I've asked the departments that would be affected to talk to their vendors to find out if there's any uh, hidden costs associated with moving communications lines or proprietary software or or other processes over to uh, over to the, uh, the, the public safety complex and if there are those costs let's know what they are and let's make them into the FY16 budget because that's when we'd be doing this um, and uh, we'll be talking about this at department meetings uh, for the duration. We'll be working with the Municipal Building Committee to uh, come up with uh, the RFPs and time them in such a way that this will all come together. The Municipal Building Committee has invited the Select Board to attend their January 22nd meeting 
um, when they're going to be talking about uh, land in North Hadley uh, for uh, general governmental purposes. Uh, so that's going to be an important meeting to attend because we'll have uh, the key stakeholders in the room at that time. Where is it? Key oh, fire. You're going to have fire and you're going to have the well, we have, we have park and rec. And we have three pieces of property up there that we've been looking at. <coughs> and uh, one of them has a number of buildings on it that we feel might do the job. You know, in fact, the only problem is we'd have to do a lot of remodeling in that respect. Uh, but in another piece of property that is all said, it's just a matter of uh, buying it and putting up two buildings and we can take care of the fire department and the park and rec in one fell swoop. Uh, How about if we put up just one building for the fire department? And not a building for park and rec. Well, the reason the reason that was brought up was because the, the property is a ten acre piece of property. But yeah, we're not looking. We, we, we haven't authorized. We haven't gone off for an RFP. We have no. We have. Correct. We're not even. Done under that, not just <laughs> the first over. step is to determine what we need for requirements. Well, that, and we're going to hear about this. And we're going to hear that on the twenty second. Hear about all of this stuff in, in uh, and you just asked about the one building and yeah. the reason we were talking about the two buildings was that CPA would be able to finance some of it. But there's the other pieces of building. One, one we don't think the lot would suffice for the fire department. We haven't asked the fire chief to take a look at that piece of property. We haven't had enough uh, investigation into the other piece which would uh, take care of a lot more problems. So that's why we want you people to meet with us so we can lay it all out show you the pieces of property, the size of the shapes. We're not going to, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. No. We're not coming to a meeting, a public meeting, and talking about land purchasing that's not part of an RFP process. The select board will not join you as a board. Because that, that, that's a little bit of a step outside the procurement process. If we want to talk about requirements that are there, and then what the requirements are for fire and, and park and rec, that's one thing, but we can't talk about parcels of land and how we organize ourselves when we haven't gone through the RFP process to even acquire a list of properties to talk about. That, that's, that's something we need to be very careful about. Sorry. Well, oh well uh, then. Weren't we directed by town meeting to? We're directed by town meeting to put out an RFP, but we haven't put together the RFP yet to even put out there to see what the properties are. I, I know. Look, Depending on not looking at a specific property, if you're looking at 20 acres, this was great for the fire department on this side, similar like they did with the elementary school and a police and fire station now. So here's a 20 acre piece of property, here's a 12 acre piece of property. This is what we could fit on both pieces of property. You got to you got to stay a little open minded here. We not can, specific we, piece of property. We can't talk about specific pieces yes, of property. Yes. But size-wise, what we're looking for and what we want to do with it is hopefully what you're going to propose. And that's what we need to keep the talk about. Yes. And not any specific. No. And, and we're, also, we have other things, uh, another piece of property, the fourth piece of property, uh, I'm sorry, it was five, another piece of property that we're looking to put the town hall on. We want to show you all these things and let you know what we're doing so that you, when people ask, well, we don't know. So it's, we just want to lay it out and approve, get your approval that what we're doing is right. So for Guilford's purposes, these are hypothetical scenarios. That's correct. Hypotheticals. They're not That's specific pieces. Of so that means we'll be attending as a resident and not a select board member in select case board. the conversation strays. I mean, at town meeting, well, we, we might can't. get a great <laughs> yeah. presentation with all the possible <laughs> fire stations that we could put on a piece of property right. and how many acres would accommodate it. So, you know. Okay. It, so that's 7 o'clock? So 7 o'clock on the 22nd. 22nd? Yes, and where's the meeting, Willie? Right here. In this room? That's right. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, good. So the other thing that we talked about uh, in the meeting was uh, 
you know, where do we have our meetings? Uh, and uh, in the past, we've set up. We've set you take up the shop. month of July off. <laughs> good. <laughs> but that's a good uh, idea. There might be a payroll or two that might need to be signed. Uh, uh, we, we've set up the shop over at the senior center, had night meetings over there, so that, that can work. Yeah. So, so I, we'll continue to talk about this and we'll keep you informed and we'll work. I'd with still it. like to. Uh, speak with the school committee and the superintendent and find out what what they have over there just just for emergency purposes Mike I, I mean we've never thought about this on, as a big hole well it's in writing but there's nothing that that we can put in place for this period of time to see if it works but I think, John, what I think Mike was saying is many disaster recovery plans are developed and yeah. then the worst thing that happens is they get parked on a shelf and yeah. you never find out if it really was a good plan or not until you, you do it. So most companies and stuff will do like a mock disaster recovery and I think it's perfect what Mike is suggesting that since this is our, uh, I'm sorry, continuity plan or whatever for operations, what a perfect way to test it out. And then the second piece to that is if in fact it got bumped, if you will, due to a real disaster where you needed to take control back of the space that you're offering up, then Mike will already be vetting the schools as a logical backup plan. I don't mind talking to the schools at all. It's yeah. not a problem. It's no, really I understand, Mike, but we're looking at a, at a 10, 12 mm -hmm. office building here that you're going to stuff into an office and a half. Well, well really. The community room plus. I, I know, I know, but plus. how many school rooms do we have over at Hopkins that we could utilize? You we know, and make it work. Okay. Well, and they're in the process of renovating and cleaning. I know, I know. I understand. You know, that's that. their big major thing when they. We have asked, we have asked the, the folks in this building put together a list of what they would need. Mm -hmm. So that's the initial step to see yeah. If they need too much stuff, if they need to bring their entire office over there. But the initial talk through was uh, the collector said she needed a crate and a laptop. Actually, a so computer a crate and a laptop. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it doesn't. It sounds like all of our our offices have it already planned out. If they had to leave here, uh, the the, uh, the accountant said she'd work from home if she had to. Mm -hmm. So I think you know they're going to put together the information okay. for us, and then we'll move forward from there, but certainly I don't mind reaching out to the schools at all. So, so I'm working on. I guess what we need to do next is have we actually put together the scope of work and bid out the actual asbestos removal? Right. So we haven't got that RFP together, so that that's something that we'll start developing. And we'll shoot with the, we'll go ahead and use use the, uh, uh -uh. the dates. <laughs> No. Go we'll, go, we'll use the dates, <laughs> the dates you proposed. Come back for more, right? July, <laughs> July, July 13th to the August 1st. Well, July 1st, you're gonna move. Right. So it's so actually you, July 1st. If we all agree that those are the dates, we'll do this. Okay. You know, we'll put the other RFP and start moving. That sounds fine. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So you know, we identified this that time frame is the least disruptive to the critical uh, the work that these. Uh, departments have to do so it fits nicely between bills and That's taxes fine. and so forth. That's okay. great. End of end of uh, fiscal year stuff, all beginning of fiscal year stuff. We talked about all of that uh, possible impact. We'll continue to talk about this at each and every departmental meeting all the way up to July first. Okay. All right. Good. Anything else? No. You did a good job with the fire. And the articles and the paper were very good. Very, they covered everything. And thank you. Uh, thank you all the towns to help us out. We appreciate that. I got one question for David, if I might. Uh, David, you said something about a generator for the uh, Kramer scope. Is that still uh, in the way? Nobody's talked to me about that, but I know that that's a project that uh, has been funded by town meeting and that there are the two generators that are supposed to be replaced. Um, so just thinking, when would I replace a generator if I was a school during the summertime? Yeah. Uh, so 
there's there, if they do that at the grammar school, there's uh, two ways to go. So uh, if you could give me a form, then I can explain to you what the story is. We'll table. Okay. All right. But that's not the, for tonight. I just have the uh, payments for Schultz Construction for Pump Station. You said right there. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we have to sign something too. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.